a storm ripping through reality. Horrifying, rotten creatures with twisted bodies and stittering legs. A night on a cold, wet rooftop, barely clinging to life. The cataclysm has not been kind to Vellum, and once again, he has barely come away alive. Welcome back to Cataclysm. Dark days ahead. The journey of Vellum. Okay, let's take stock of our situation after everything that happened in last episode. So, we are sitting at one strength, zero ints, one perception, this sits dexterity, and I assume all of that is probably from, if I were to guess, um, it's largely from pain, is a lot of that. Where's all of our strength going? There isn't any morale issue. I don't see, I don't see where, the, where we're losing all that strength right now. It's probably in our wounds. So pain plus wounds. Okay. We do know that there are going to be more gangrenous around here. Last time we ran into quite a few of them right around here. Um, one of the things that both that Vellum is not aware of is what is causing these gangrenous. Perhaps they are something that like infects another zombie or perhaps there's some sort of nest or hive or something around here. We may need to investigate that to see if we can stop them from spawning because that's a problem. And then we have the unstable rift. Because of our current situation of one strength, it is too heavy to pick up. So one of the first things we might be doing right at the beginning here is, so it is just about midnight, which means even if we were to retreat back home, we have a few hours to do so. So why don't we rest until, like, rest for an hour. And safe mode's on, so something comes up here, or if we even spot something. Look at that. Wait, what What the hell? A moorhen? Bird belonging to the... Oh, okay, it's a bird. Oh my gosh, I got very worried for a second there. One thing that is interesting is that if you see the origin Tameable Wildlife, it actually... This is probably from base cataclysm, but Tameable Wildlife means that there's a chance that we can actually tame this. Um, don't know how, but we could... But we do have enough strength now that, yes, we can pick up the Unstable Rift and we can start to get out of here. I'm going to uncrouch and we're going very gently. In fact, we're even going to peek. Which allows us to kind of like peek around corners. We hear something. Footsteps. There's a zombie there. Are we able to cast... We're able to at least cast Magic Missile. Mostly because it's nearly max level at this point. We are still in severe pain. Is there any way we can manage that pain? We have aspirin. Danger crawler spotted. Yes, stop. Okay. We are going to run backwards and immediately head up the ladder here. Because if possible, we want the dangerous crawler. What is that? That was weird. What is that? I see a shadow, but no creature. Oh, it's because the Morhan is flying overhead. And the zombie is just attacking the wall beneath us. There are definitely more of these dangerous creatures around. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and back up. And uh, I'm actually going to drink some clean water as well, so we don't get thirsty doing this. I'll wait another 30 minutes here. In fact, some of our pain did wear off, and we do have a higher perception. Nothing we can do about our wounds. I think we have the situation under control in the temporary here. Peek down the ladder. I don't see anything. Oh my god. Yep, there was definitely something down there, though. Immediately hit my left leg. I'm actually going to see if I can look over the ledge here. Peek down. So the zombie's right there right now. Zombie in the way. Okay. Um. Okay, let's pull out the knife. Oh man, we're just so bad at fighting right now, though. Okay, screw it. We're just going to wait. 1 a.m. We're going to wait another hour. It's not lost track of us, but we are in way less pain now. Only down to intense pain. We'll bandage our leg. Anything that says average, we're going to bring it back up to good so that we heal faster. And we got our true, you know, true night vision back now. We also have a little bit of mana now, too. And now there's a zombie cop down there. Gosh dang it. Is there another way off this roof? There is a drain pipe, but Vellum has a very clear memory of just recently falling down a drain pipe. 
So I'd like to not do that if possible. I'll peek down the ledge. So we now have a zombie and a zombie top down there. That's really not ideal. I don't see anything over here. Two gangrenous crawlers. There's no way I can hit them from here, can I? No. Can I stand up and hit them? I probably can. Gangrenous crawler. Can I not fire it? There we go. One's down. I was hoping that that would bring them away. This is the loud sound. It does look like they're, they're potentially leaving. Zombie's not here anymore. We're going to make a run for it. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop around to the north of this building. Move very slowly. If we see a dangerous crawler, we're going to stop immediately. We do have good vision again. Okay. Speaking of... Take out another crawler. That explosions don't bring stuff in. But now that we have our gas mask on and it's prepared... Actually, let's check our gas mask. How fast is that? Um, where is it? 90 out of 100. Okay, so... We're not... That bad off there. It's not using stuff too fast. Acidic zombie. Sickly looking zombie. Its skin looks especially thick. With a sticky yellow fluid growing, flowing through the clearly visible veins. Probably don't want to mess with that. I don't know if it's going to like vomit acid on me or something. But we are going to very carefully move through all of this. Um, what the fuck is that? That is a Sarasaurus zombie. Okay. Another zombie on us now. Okay. The, Saras the Sarasaurus zombie is going to be pretty slow. So we're going to move towards it and use it to get by. What the fuck is that? Batwing zombie? Okay, then. The zombie's arms have stretched far beyond human limits. The skin lengthened into gruesome fleshy membrane. The mutation does not suit it well. It moves clumsily, even compared to other zombies, but occasionally leap a significant distance. We're going to avoid that. We're going to loop a little bit closer to these guys over here. Oh, it's on us, I think. It is hostile, but okay, never mind. I was just about to say it hasn't seen us, and then it immediately saw us. So we're going to start running. Okay. Oh my god, and another thing. Gangrenous Impaler. A hide a corpse hideously hideously twisted. A corpse hideously twisted into an instant like form. Hollow tendril reaches out from its open thorax. I wonder if this is what's been making things into gangrenous crawlers. If possible, can we reach it? How much damage did that do? We did 21 damage, but oh my god, it almost killed it. We're going to explode the impaler. That'll draw some zombies to where it exploded. That's okay. There's a bicycle here. Um, it's actually in okay condition. Its back wheel is kind of a little damaged, but it's otherwise good. We could grab that and then just literally just ride away. You know what? We're going to do that. Get on the bike. Ride away. I'll explain vehicles a little bit later, but um, to say the least, the thing that you're going to look at if you're curious about what's happening is the speed. Um, and the bike only moves whenever we turn or if we pass the turn while maintaining speed. And the bicycle is, yeah, sound zero. It is dead quiet. So we are going to... Oh. Yep, that was a problem. I unfortunately got too close to this guy as I was trying to bicycle past him and the Aptosaur slammed into me. Made me drop my crowbar. Oh my gosh. Basically clotheslining me as we tried to ride past it. I didn't have a lot of control over that bicycle. We're going to get up. Take a moment. I would like to get... You know what? Fuck my crowbar. It, it's gone to me. Vellum looks at the crowbar, looks at the zombie, was greedy for just a moment, considering stepping over to get, take it up, but decided at the last moment that this outing has been one of the worst experiences he's had in the Cataclysm. 
he he feels he felt so confident and has been so heavily struck down we retreat back into our abode we do hear the sounds of footsteps outside so we are going to retreat into the basement right away double check that the is nothing down here because we heard we heard noises but i think it's just echoes from upstairs and we're going to retreat back down into our deeper area and tend to our wounds after that abysmal showing we are going to have to take a moment to really take care of ourselves we did actually manage to pick up a pocket survival guide during all of that which probably teaches us yeah teaches us some recipes the gas mash was uh actually really pretty good because as soon as we return home Elam is reminded of what we did find during this and we're going to bring it upstairs And place it on our desk. An unstable rift. We don't know what this item means for us. We don't know what this does for us. Perhaps it's simply a single consumable item that we will just use once and then forget about. Perhaps it's just the beginning of something greater. We're not sure, but we are going to contemplate this item in our sleep. For sure. We're going to spend some time uh, getting healed up, eating. We'll be back once Vellum is ready to venture outside of the tower again. Vellum tosses and turns, trying to get to sleep and having nightmares of strange things. Almost daymares because we're not even managed to get any sleep. Going downstairs for a snack in the middle of what would normally be the night for him. He's just trying to get some sort of rest, heal some of these injuries, and uh, it's just kind of not happening. It's a nice vegetarian meal, something that he would actually like quite a bit. And uh, we're going to, while we're here, so that we don't forget, we're going to um, fill our our plastic canteen with more water. So we do have plenty of water. We've been cleaning it from these magical pools that are around the academy here. Um, the magical pools seem to have an infinite amount of water in them, despite being visibly shallow, which has been a great boon to us, for sure. And once more at it, just trying to get some sleep. As he was trying to get some sleep, we hear an explosion from the south of us. It's 5 p.m. in the afternoon, but we're too curious. What the hell mu happened down here? That something exploded. We see corpses, bloodstains of things that fell into the pits. The various pits that we have. These pits have actually been incredibly useful. We're probably going to put some more of them up. Nothing we didn't need to deal with right away, I don't think. The explosions brought back momentary pangs of worry from Velum. That's perhaps the Dragonish Crawlers had followed him back to his home. But it may have just been something like a boomer, something less threatening. Despite laying in bed for hours, Bellum is just too disturbed by his previous experiences the last night that just can't sleep, just isn't even tired. He understands that like this is something that he should be doing. He should be sleeping. This is the best way to heal. This is the best way to move forward. But unfortunately, what he wants and what his adrenaline wants are completely different levels right now so we're just going to try and eat and drink um as much as we can here um and then our our situation is looking pretty good all things considered we're more or less back to something resembling full health so we are going to uh go ahead and pull out our bow and we're gonna check on oh wow a lot of things found their way here last night we have zombies, an Aptosaurus zombie. This pit is just obliterating the nearby zombies. Oh, Tainted Bone. A gangrenous crawler did make its way back here. This is one of the things that I feared is that there's some, there's some corpses out here that we can't quite reach. 
we're going to grab a plank here and see about if uh, we can like put a plank over the pit. Yes, we can. Okay. That feels a little weird to be able to put a plank over the pit and then kind of step out into the air and crush a zombie. But uh, if, it's, if they're going to let us do it, we're going to do it because otherwise getting down there is going to be a pain in the butt to try and actually crush these zombies so they don't come back. And we'll go ahead and crush on this side as well. Check out what all... Yes, there is a dangerous zombie nearby. Go ahead and uh, aim up on this guy. Use our nature's arrows whenever we can. Three simple shots. Crush him down. We're going to close our door. Go ahead and uh, remove the cover here. And... Our, our desires and our jobs from earlier are still here. We still need a mortar and pestle. Hopefully, with everything we've been doing lately, we've taken out a few more zombies. So, our, our current suspicion is that there's not an infinite number of them. It's not actually infinite. It's just that there's just so freaking many of them around here that we're kind of running through a, a, a fairly significant horde. So taking out any of these that we can as we move along will be beneficial. What? Um, a snot gobbler. Wonder where he heard that name from. Swollen, gooey looking mutant child looks bad, even for a zombie. That's maybe, maybe that's why it seems to want to hug so badly. Uh, no, we're good. We're good. We're going to, uh... Actually, aim at the bat wing first because it's the most likely to be able to get to us. Take that out. And then the snot gobbler. Oh, the, our chance at hitting this thing is really low. Rush will steady up all the way and do a precise shot, which did absolutely nothing. Took it out. It exploded, which means that we're probably going to have company here soon. But uh, kind of want to try and see if we can narrow down some of the zombies this time because retreating into more zombies is something that really scared us last time. So I very much like, if possible, to essentially secure our retreats this time. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, stop targeting there and back the hell up. Put away our recurve bow. Just being a little overconfident. Let him get a little close. We're going to... Uh, Wind strike this man. Just completely destroy him. Pull the bow back out. Aim down and finish off that last one. And make sure we uh, get our arrows back because even the nature arrows, which are not that great of arrows in general, um, are going to be kind of worth our time. What is that? Feral human. Okay, yeah, let's... That needs to die. We're only just barely managing to, to, to get blows that are, like, kind of grazing this guy. We are better at archery than we were whenever we started, but we we have a long way to go. Another just barely grazing shot, just doing three damage to it. There we go. We did actually manage to get a shot for 11, but uh, we're kind of holding, holding out hope for a crit here. Another shot for four. Screw it. We'll switch to the carbon fiber arrows. They're slightly more accurate as well. And we still need to set damage to it. It is bleeding very badly. But we want to just take it down. Is it almost dead now? It is bleeding very, very badly. There we go. We should probably go back for our crowbar, now that I think about it. Also means that we will be clearing... By, by gr grabbing our crowbar, we'll also be clearing out... Oh, another one of those gangrenous impalers. We are not going to risk shooting it with a bow because they can see us. We're going to immediately put, put, put away our weapon and send out a flurry of magic missiles into it. There's something going on with those for sure. And we're going to uh, pull our bow back out and see about taking this guy down. A gangrenous impaler being this close does give us the impression that they may be coming up north here. Should we shoot at the zombie child? Only get a grazing shot, unfortunately. There we go. We need to find the source of these things. They're a significant problem for us. My current suspicion is that the impalers may be infecting 
other zombies nearby with whatever mutation this new breed of zombies has. Which is part of the reason why I wanted to go ahead. Oh, there's a pistol there. Not something that Bellum cares too much for. And a downed zombie. That's strange. I don't think we killed that. Uh Oh, that zombie. As we were smashing the zombie run here, that other zombie just reanimated. Literally right next to us. Holy crap. It's a serious zombie movie moment there where, you know, you're you're in the middle of doing something and a body that definitely seems like it's completely dead suddenly reanimates on top of you. Dead for good now. Not getting back up after that one. Go ahead and make sure we finish off the other one as well. What do we need to cast the spell that allows us to harvest the hunter? We need sticks or pine burrows. There is a dead tree here, but it doesn't look like we can get any sticks from it. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, that feels so good after all of the danger and lack of success we've had to just see a perfect headshot on that zombie. I mean, look at this. There's just so many zombies around here. Where did they all come from? Did we never clear out this area properly? I don't think we did. With some confidence in ourselves restored, Bellum is going to, we're going to head south again and uh, see about trying to get to... Um, well, there's a clothing store, grocery store, fitness gym. What was it that we were trying to get to? Probably the dojo? But there's a bunch of houses here. So actually, I think I'm going to investigate the house instead. Because the house has a pretty decent chance. This is a diner. The house has a pretty decent chance for a mortar and pestle. Having some success, finally does make us feel good. Make, gives us some of our confidence back that we can handle this this apocalypse and, and the things that are coming our way. A few shots into the zombie. It's badly bleeding. It's going to try and chase us down a little bit, but uh, it's, it's pretty much gone. Is this really a house? It says office. I apologize. I thought it was a house, but... I don't know if there's anything in office that is going to be interesting to us. I'm going to let this one approach us. Aim up. As risky as it is, it actually is a fairly good strategy to let the zombies rush at us and release at the very last moment. Clothing store is very unlikely to have anything we need. There is a house to the north here, though. And the, I, I did check this time. That one's actually a house. Let this one approach us. Carefully steady. Fire. Okay. Not the best shot there. There we go. Cop, cop zombie. This must have been like... Just some sort of uh, a bus. No, so I, I, for a second I thought that might have been a prison bus. Oh man. Skeletal zombie? It's like its skin has completely rotted off. Not necessarily uh, an improvement, though. Outdoor extension table is not something we need. We do have a friend in here, this in the form of this decayed zombie. Let's see if we can take care of it. It got really close really fast. We are going to uh, actually kind of leak back out this window here. Actually, something I'd like to do is we'll put away our bow and step up to this group here. There we go. And see about wind striking. How long does that take me? 125. So we have enough time. We do lose our concentration. We'll try again. Lose our concentration again. Come on. Is that going to be good enough to hit both? Yes. Hitting both of them for 34 damage. Okay. So that is going to be probably one of our best spells for a while to come. For just taking out... We'll finish it off with a magic missile because it was going to make us sad anyways to unfortunately take out one of these human children. And we will do another wind strike here. Losing our concentration over and over. They are kind of... Because zombies fumble around, they're kind of fumbling around in a way that was not beneficial to us. 
Yeah, I looked at that. That's a much better use of our mana. Because it took both of them down to really, really low. Very quickly. We'll finish off the back one with a matchup missile. Hit the front one. And we're going to pull out our knife here. I'll finish that one off. Which is fairly quiet. So, smash these guys down. And uh, catch our breath real quick. How badly injured is this guy in here? Oh, he is bleeding and quite injured. What about this guy? Full HP. Hey, okay, let's go ahead and uh, take care of him. Some magic missiles will do, since he's a single target and it's our cheapest spell. Okay. Let's take a look around real quick. We are actually going to grab these sheets real quick because we're going to be making more bandages. Once we get a moment. Ooh. Don't want carbine. Interesting. Nothing interesting in here. A robot box kit. What does that involve? We'll take the robotics kit instructions because it's a book that we can read. Some coding that would have actually been useful whenever we were in horrible pain earlier. And the kitchen here is what's going to be most likely. We're going to go ahead and search for mortar. No mortar and pestle, unfortunately. Basically be checking for anything that is... Uh, Unperishable food. Always collecting more food. Deck of cards there. If they were Uno cards, we would probably take them, but because they're better than the sorcery cards for uh, keeping our focus up. Speaking of, we actually might want to just go ahead and close the window there and take a moment to play a deck of magic with of, with ourselves, just to get our focus back up, so we have a more more uh, likely chance to cast spells, and it also gives us some moments to recover some mana as well. There's definitely something on the ceiling. Advanced economics. Sure. It's a book. Something on the ceiling of this building, I think. More houses down in the way, so... Let's see if we can... can... Oh, there's a second floor. I see. Ah, graveyard. Can we wind strike? No, we don't have enough. Can we mana bolt it? Take out the boomer? What did he leave behind? Oh, it's a leather bag. Okay. How badly injured is that guy? Not too bad. We'll go ahead and just take it out with a few... Oh, more coating. Perfectly. Perfect, perfect, perfect. A few uh, well-aimed strikes. Get through this graveyard. A graveyard during the zombie apocalypse seems like a bad idea, but it doesn't really actually seem any worse than any other place around here. We are looking for another smartphone as well. I just remembered that. We need to maybe make a list of the things that we once had and have lost. What is this? Monkey bars? Oh, it's like a little play gym. And there's a feral dwarf that sees us. Okay. So, of course, it can just open that door. We are going to aim up on it. It is a dwarf, so it is kind of hard to hit. We'll wait for it to get a little bit closer. Actually, we'll just aim it at there because uh, from the northwest, you hear a steady patter of light whistling chirps. Oh, I don't like that. What the hell does that mean? Whatever it is, we don't see it yet. Aim up again. It's having a hard time crossing over the jungle gym because it's trying to make move straight at us. Let it come at us again. Uh, the other zombie just got really close. Let's abandon that course of action real quick. And kind of fire at it from trying... I mean, we, we are an archer. We, we probably seem, need to just be keeping our, our, our range here. We are going to let it come up on us, though. Because I don't really want to have the shock go wild and cause a bunch of noise. Take out the other one very easily. Okay. What is in here? Put a... Take out our knife. No use to having our bow out whenever we're in the middle of this place. Any books? Anything interesting? I will say if I find a candle, we're going to be taking that because one of the things that we actually ran into is whenever we were in an, an incre incredible amount of pain, we actually were not able to summon our little psychic light. And it made it very hard for us to find anything that we can do. We'll step up to here. Do this. Mortar again. Mortar and pestle. There we go. Okay, also there's a 
book there that we haven't read before. And a little bit of food. Nothing too interesting. Is there anything interesting in the fridge? No. What is that? A bullfrog. Oh, okay. Huh. I did not expect that based on what I was looking like. We did accidentally step around this corner right into a zombie kid. I just gonna take it out very quickly. Kind of ruin our mood for the rest of the day, but it is what it is. You have to do what you have to do. Checked these books. Just some crime novels. Nothing interesting. And, uh, mortar and pestle found. We are going to temporarily return home. Um, after we deal with this feral zombie. Or feral goblin. Um, just immediately pull out the magic missiles. Because those guys can be a problem if they get up on top of you. They're very, very hard to hit because of how small they are. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and... Something's killed all of these zombies. And there's something on the ground here. A slime sample. I wonder if that means that there's going to be slimes nearby. Anything interesting? We are looking for a better smartphone. Prefer... Or UPS smartphone. Preferably one that uh, actually has some battery. Man, something tore apart this car. What the hell? You know, I vaguely remember seeing this last time we came through here as well. There's a bunch of freaking... A Dryosaurus? What is that? Shuffling corpse of a large, feathered, bipedal dinosaur with strong legs, broad shoulders, and a pointed beak. Its tattered feathers are stained with black, sticky liquid. This liquid that we keep seeing in the eyes and veins and even in the blood of all of the zombies we take out. On our way home, I think we are going to just quickly go through and take out as many zombies as we can. There's one. Two. Ooh, she had some Prussian blue tablets on her. Prussian blue tablets are a form of oxidized ferrous ferrocyanide assaults. Sounds terrible, but what it actually does is it cures radiation, which may be a thing that comes up later. Uh, there's a feral human here. Fortunately, being a human, there's a very low chance that they're going to spot us. So we'll take them out as well. Add them to the uh, kill list for tonight. It did actually manage to kind of rush us down there, but it's bleeding very badly now. So their time is short. And over. They do have a crowbar on them, but ideally I'd like to get my crowbar back. That one just rushed me as I pull out its bow and aim it down. It managed to get, get sight of Vellum and immediately rushed forward before we were even to, able to get a real sight on it. Did not matter. It didn't get a swing off and we did manage to take it down before it swung at us. And what? That zombie just appeared out of nowhere? What the hell? Okay. We were just walking along and that thing just kind of popped up. That was weird. Not sure where that one came from because I didn't see a body there. Take that one out. I think that's six now. And uh, we did find our bicycle. Is the bicycle, bicycle still in good shape? It is. We'll take back our crowbar. And uh, we're going to get back into the seat of the bicycle here. And... Kind of very slowly this time. Drive it back to our base. Just in case we end up needing some fast transport. Seems like there's a swimmer zombie waiting for us at front front door. But it doesn't matter now. Take it out. Cover our arrows. Which mana do we have? Basically none. Okay. We are going to put everything up. Which is easiestly done by just creating a pile on the floor here of stuff that we don't want in our inventory anymore. And then because I have set up these zones for sorting, we're going to just auto sort everything. And Vellum takes care of everything, puts everything in its place. His ADHD and o OCD kind of just kicking in properly there. Go ahead and start up a fire here. 
get a little bit of food before we start doing this. Make sure that uh, we're in a good place because there's a chance that what we're about to do has like a failure chance on crafting. We have not that many ingredients for this. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're like well fed and stuff like that. We could <laughs> pour the vegetable soup into the dishwasher. Uh, No, we're not going to do that. Go ahead and eat this vegetable soup. And then what do we need? Okay, so uh, minor staff of the Magi. So we need a, a long stick, leather patches, and 10 mana dust. So now that we have this, we should be able to search for mana. Yeah, we can make mana dust. How many do, How many does it make it at once? Let's go ahead and make one and see what happens. So that makes... Oh, okay. One is one to one. Gotcha. So let's go ahead and make 10. Go ahead and do it over here. Grab the items. Need to make eight more. There we go. Bulk make those real quick. Now that we have the dust, what's the next step? We need leather patches. Do we have anything leather here? I think we did intentionally grab. Yeah, okay, so we have the fedora. Leather backpack and another leather, leather backpack. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop those. Um, we'll also drop the sheets because we want to disassemble those as well. And we're going to disassemble all of these um, into hopefully some leather. We're also going to disassemble the sheets so that we can make some um, more bandages here. Cut up the fedora and cut up the other leather backpack. And that will get us a nice amount of ingredients. We'll sort it out again. Make sure that everything goes back to where it needs to be. And then what else? this point now, we just need a long stick. Can we make a long stick? We can make long pointy sticks, but we can't make a long stick. We're going to go ahead and assume that we get a stick by doing stuff with trees. Put away our knife. Wield this hatchet. And before we run out of too much daylight here... Oh wow, another zombie fell into our pits. Holy crap, this has been so valuable here. We're going to come around and check all these trees. Nothing on those trees. See if we can find some sticks. Of course, it's never that easy. We take out a zombie that uh, seems to just come from... Okay, well, there's about a billion freaking zombies down here. Holy crap. Where are these guys coming from? I thought we already cleared out this area. This is a lot. Perhaps they're being drawn to the water or something? I do you think that I want to take out this bloated zombie over here, though? Which might draw them all. Yeah, that's what I thought. Kind of drew them all over there. And then... My idea is that we are going to put away our bow and how not that long of a range. Okay. We have to get a little bit closer. And wind strike all of those guys, bringing all of them down very, very low. And we are going to send a magic missile into the Aptosaurus and pour our bow back out and see if we can actually take care of some of these things. We'll aim up on the Aptosaurus. We hit it. We hit it for a lot of damage, too. Just barely freaking matters because it's a freaking dinosaur. And it goes down. Hell yes. Now, it's just the closest. As we tried to aim up, this tough zombie actually did manage to uh, kind of get up on us really quickly there. And, uh, oh my gosh, and it happened again. I'm gonna pour out a knife. Screw this. Try and take down this fat zombie. And I really want to crush this corpse. Yes, there we go. And get our arrows back out of these guys. There's just so many zombies back out here. We really do need to kind of just take care of some of them if possible. Um, actually, we should put our bow away real quick. 
and we're going to staunch our wounds and uh, make sure we're not continuing to bleed because these guys are literally on top of our face. There's one, technically two if you count the uh, fat zombie. Three. We're just gonna run past this guy, trying to avoid to go down that, that that narrow alley there. Why are we so slow right now? Is it mostly because of our wounds? We are also wary, and it seems like our uh, night eyes was on instead of extended stride. There we go. That explains a lot, actually. That's four. We actually got a critical on this SWAT zombie, and it's still deflected off its hide. This SWAT zombie might be hard to take down without, like, armor-piercing arrows. I don't think broadhead arrows pierce much armor, but the carbon fiber should. Another great hit, and it just reflects off of its hide. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to kill that thing with arrows very easily. We do have magic, but we'll have to wait until tomorrow for that. See if we can at least take out this tough zombie here before we call it a night. And with that, even though it's not technically down yet, it will be. There we go. Don't have to waste the uh, exertion on that. Okay. Seems like there's a lot less out here now. Can we see about picking one of these dead trees, perhaps? Pick dead tree. There we go. We have sticks. Did it give us any long sticks? It didn't. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure how we get a long stick. Can we just get like a crit on this guy? And we got a critical. It didn't hurt it. Well then, that answers that question. Even a critical hit against a, a SWAT zombie from a bow does not hurt it. Well, okay then. We're gonna go ahead and back up here and rest. We have a little while left on the night time. Is there any trees to the north here? We might be able to harvest a long stick from. We did spot a uh, shocker zombie for just a moment there. Looks like there's some trees in the park up here. More sticks, twigs, nothing in any of those. There is a winch here. Or was that shocker? All the way up there. We don't want to mess with a shocker. Shocker is a human body with pale blue flesh crackling with electrical energy. It just seems like something that could actually literally shoot energy from its body and zap us. And that's not something we want to mess with. Mulberry tree. We're not having the best luck here trying to find a stick. A stick of all things being of all things being the end of our craft session here is was not expected. We did manage to clear out a lot of zombies around us though, despite the fact that we once again almost died. We did make our area safer. Perhaps there's something we could deconstruct. I just noticed that there is a coat rack here. We'll close these windows, close the curtains. Because I'm about to create some light and we don't really want anything to see us. Create a small light. And can we de deconstruct this for a long stick? One long stick. Yes, we can. Okay. So we basically made it out of... We're going to be making a staff out of a freaking coat rack, but uh, Vellum's heard of staffs made out of worse, worse things. Ideally, we would have wanted to date it from nature due to our more druidic sentiments, but this works. Okay. So we bring it back down here and minor staff of the Magi. We're going to go ahead and sit down here. We need to be able to see the craft and uh, light up this area down here quite well. And we start crafting our first staff. Oh, wow. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Minor Staff of the Magi. As is tradition for mages to craft their first staff, Vellum has finally taken the step to becoming a true Archmage. Following in the tradition of those before him, he now has a staff that is a magical focus. Wielding it will just give us mana regeneration and a little bit of mana focus. It also is actually a staff 
and we if we want to we can uh attach a spear strap to it in order to be able to strap it to our back we've heard of martial arts styles um using staves before so if we can find a martial arts style where we can use this that would be actually fantastic our staff in hand we really do feel like i'm archmage at least the first step of being a mage now ah <sighs> and it just feels good to have a goal complete and that's where i'm going to have to leave you this has been Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, and I have been Arima. If you guys are enjoying the series, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I am enjoying the hell out of making this series, and I would love to see your guys' interactions. Also, if you have any questions about what's going on, the game in general, or about things like comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, because... I, I do want to hear from you guys and what your guys' opinion is on the series. And I am, of course, taking suggestions for things. Although we do have a few things in mind still of where Vellum is going to be going and some end goals for him that I will reveal with time. Anyways, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Goodbye.